Naval War College community, family, friends, and guests, welcome. I am Captain Dunley Rochino, the Dean of Students, and I'll be serving as your MC for today's ceremony. As a general note, you're welcome to take pictures at any time during the ceremony. We do have official photographers taking pictures today, and you will find those photos posted on your Flickr site for you to download. At this time, as a courtesy, please silence your cell phones or put them on vibrate. Uh, faculty and staff, please remove your badges. At this time, please rise and remain standing for the arrival of the official party, national anthem, and the invocation. The national anthem will be sung by musician second class Holden Moyer from the Navy band Northeast. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, MU2. Commander Robert Fastnot, Command Chaplain, Naval Station Newport, will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Mighty creator of the wind and waves, we enter your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. Today we celebrate with these students who will have a global impact as they leave this place to ensure peace by sea power. Bless the leadership and staff of this institution with wisdom and discernment. We ask for your safety for the friends and families, the crews of those represented here. We thank you for the support of their loved ones, and may we all learn to love a greater love. We thank you for the hard work and dedication of each student. We thank you for their instructors and staff who have facilitated a world-class education. May all that is said and done here today bring you glory. In all your holy names we pray, amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Please be seated. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the members of our official party. Dr. Paul Brister, Dean, Center for Naval Warfare Studies. Professor William Nault, Interim Dean, College of Leadership and Ethics. Dr. Stephen Pierce, Interim Dean, College of Distance Education. Professor Thomas Mangold, Dean, International Programs and Maritime Security Cooperation. Dr. Timothy Schultz, Interim Dean of Academics. Commander Joshua Hammond, 
Professor, Strategy and Policy, and Dr. Stephen Mariano, Provost, United States Naval War College. Several years ago, we began a tradition at the U.S. Naval War College of allowing the graduating student body to nominate their guest from amongst all the talented professionals at the college. I would like to ask graduating student, Lieutenant Commander Jess Fenning, to introduce your faculty guest speaker. Jess. All right, good afternoon. Admiral, Provost, Dean, distinguished guests, faculty and staff, fellow graduates, family and friends, and fellow students. As the Dean just mentioned, those of us who graduate off cycle have the opportunity to exercise some light democracy and vote for the person we want to give us our graduating remarks. Deciding who to vote for is not so much about finding an inspirational person here at Naval War College. It's more about narrowing down a choice from many inspirational options. So who did I think would be able to send us back to our services with the words that would strike the right balance between the seriousness of what we do uh, and the lightness of life? This would probably be someone who had at his command an impressive repertoire of movie quotes, who also had the tendency to <laughs> rise above the crowd with his fashion choices when not required to be in uniform. So I voted. And because the person I voted for was selected, I now have the honor of introducing him. Professor Josh Hammond, Commander United States Navy, is a strategy and war moderator and also teaches the elective called Film, War, and Society, which focuses on World War II movies. Professor Hammond graduated from the University of Michigan with a Bachelor of Arts in Classical Languages and holds a Master's in National Security and Strategic Studies from the US Naval War College. He is a naval flight officer with over 2,300 flight hours and 500 carrier landings between the F-14 Delta and the F-18 Foxtrot. He is an excellent moderator, and I'm glad I got the opportunity to take his elective and introduce him today. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Josh Hammond, Commander, United States Navy. Jess, uh, thank you. Uh, it's been a minute since I've been in a ready room, uh, so I gotta admit, I appreciate an introduction like that. Um, kind of brings me back to my AJO days. Class of November 2023, admirals, general, provosts, deans, distinguished guests, faculty and staff, friends and family. Um, I'm honored and humbled to get the unexpected chance to speak to you today. So real quick, funny story. 10 years ago, I was in your shoes. Like I was literally in them. I was graduating from the junior class here in Newport off cycle. A friend of mine was the honor graduate. And much like I'm sure your honor grad um, was doing in the days leading up to today's event, um, he was asking all of us what we thought he should say in his speech. And I told him, dude, you gotta go all out. Full Bill and Ted. <laughs> you gotta hire people to dress up like the theorists from S&W bring them out on stage, and just wow the crowd. Like, Clausewitz rides in on a horse, Sun Tzu does a backflip, Thucydides comes out in a toga, it would be most excellent. In the end, he declined. But, I tell you what, I think about that suggestion every single graduation since. So, this week, when it was finally time for me to put my money where my mouth was, I also declined. Now for those of you who are thinking like, oh my God, does this mean what I think it means? I'm really sorry to disappoint you. Rest assured I was closer to doing this than you might realize. Um, but instead of something like that, uh, I'd like to share my perspective as someone who kind of has a foot in both worlds, as a former student uh, and now as a current faculty member. Because so much of what I learned here at the college wasn't clear to me right away, like at graduation. Some of it did become clear later, but I really didn't see the big picture until I started teaching here. So I hope my perspective today will help you realize what this year has meant to you. First thing I want you to realize is that this year was important. What you did here was important. It was important to you because I know how hard you worked. For those of you I had the privilege of having in seminar, I really know how hard you worked. And that hard work paid off. You're all better writers, better speakers, and most importantly, better thinkers than you were 12 months ago. 
and you're gonna take those skills forward with you in your careers. It was also important to your families, although I'm sure you were as equally unsuccessful as I was at convincing them that preparing for class was just as important as preparing for, de uh, for deployment. It's like, sorry kids, I'd love to take you to the playground, but I have to read a book about ancient Greece today. Uh, but I know you couldn't have made it through this course without their support. And hopefully it was important for you all to be here together, give you a chance to rebalance your work and home lives, to finally make it to that swimming lesson or that school play, even if you were like sneaking a peek at Thucydides on the breaks. And finally, what you did was important to your service. Although I'm sure at times it felt like they'd much rather you just take those back-to-back -back, uh, sea duty orders and knock this thing out in your spare time. In the end, the Navy is gonna be glad they sent you here. The second thing I want you to realize is that what you did here was meaningful. You pushed yourselves in ways you didn't think you'd be pushed. You used parts of your brain that hadn't been active since college, or in the case of Naval Academy grads, since high school. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, guys. I love you. I love you. <laughs> but you learned a lot here. And some of what you learned, its utility is pretty obvious. You learned how to plan complex operations. You learned how policy gets made. You learned how the interagency works. I found this kind of thing invaluable when I moved on from being like just some random officer on a staff to somebody leading a staff in planning. So what you learned, its utility is a little less obvious. Now you may have thought you were studying what drove Athens and Sparta to come into conflict or why the First World War grinded on for so long. What you really were studying though was the difference between why people say, do something, why people say they do something, and why they really do something or how to make sure you're matching the value and object to the cost you're willing to pay for it. These ideas are gonna inform the way you think for the rest of your careers, and maybe longer. Now, finally, the utility of some of what you learned here may seem totally esoteric. Um, so like Jess said, in addition to teaching strategy and war, I also co-teach an elective on film. And I guarantee you, I never thought at the Naval War College, we'd spend 30 minutes of class time discussing feminist film theory, but we did. Um, and that's what I love about our electives as a professor, and that's what I loved about them as a student. Um, they give us a chance to try something new, to get out of our comfort zone, to indulge our curiosity, uh, to think outside the box. But it's not just for our own personal benefit, either as professors or as students, uh, that the War College offers classes like this. Having conversations about esoteric topics is actually of great utility. It's a way for us to lift the lid on the relationship between war and society, for us to explore the connections between the professions of arms and the people we serve, and hopefully find something important, something we wouldn't have otherwise seen, something we would have walked right by if we hadn't taken the time to study it more closely here. As a result of all these things you've learned, you've grown in big ways, and you're all going to be better officers, better leaders, and better men and women because of it. And finally, I want you to know that what you did here was critical for the national security of the United States of America. I know this sounds like super hyperbolic, but hear me out on this one. So when I graduated 10 years ago, all I was thinking about was counterinsurgency. And it's not like Al-Qaeda and ISIS were running war colleges, right? Although, I imagine if they were, they'd also get complaints that their lectures had slides with dark text on dark backgrounds. It was super hard to read in the notes. <laughs> like, Guys, I get it, it's a big problem and we're working on it. <laughs> so they might not have been running war colleges, but, but China and Russia, they are running war colleges. And they're just as busy prepping for great power competition as we are. So last year, my civilian teaching partner and I got a long, challenging conversation about like, what are we doing here? Like, what's the purpose of all this? What's the purpose of SNW? What's the purpose of the war college? Um, those of you who've had like a few too many beers in port and said about fixing the problems of the Navy at 2 a.m., you, you know the vibe I'm talking about. But at the heart of it was our desire to make sure that we were preparing you for the national security environment, environment you were about to encounter, the same way I was prepared when I was a student. Now, maybe I'm engaging in presentism, which is something my teaching partner always rolls his eyes at. You know, thinking that um, today is so different and so unique that it's silly to compare it to any other time in history. Maybe today is really no more challenging than 10 years ago. But oh, I don't know, right? Like, I feel like we're nearing an inflection point. And we don't have the same advantages over our enemies that we did 10 years ago when I graduated. But one advantage we still have is how we think about problems like this and how we think about war. 
And after that conversation, we realized we couldn't waste a theorist. We couldn't waste a case study. We couldn't waste a minute of class time because we needed to give you that time to think. We're rightfully proud of the wargaming that was done here in the 1930s and the role it played in our defeat of Japan in World War II. But I think that gives short shrift to the thinking that was done here in the years leading up to that conflict. Wargaming sharpens your tools, sure, but thinking sharpens a different set of tools. And that's what I and the rest of the faculty are trying to help you do. Not just out plan or out strategy or out policy our enemies, but to outthink them. Because if we can do that, we can have a real advantage in a competition to come. And that's what I hope you learned here, even if maybe you don't realize it yet. Thank you. Professor Hammond, on behalf of the students, staff, and faculty, I thank you for your comments and your ongoing contributions and service to our country. For each graduating class, one student is selected for recognition as the President's Honor Graduate. Recipients of this award are chosen based on their outstanding achievement across a spectrum of disciplines, including academic performance, participation in Naval War College activities, participation in civic and community activities, and promotion of the armed forces and government services in the public interest. Mr. George Lang, Chief Executive Officer, Naval War College Foundation, will join Dr. Mariano in presenting these awards. For the College of Naval Warfare, the honor graduate of the November 2023 graduating class is Captain Jason Sherman. Would you please come up to the stage to receive your award? <laughs> Captain Sherman was class leader for his strategy and policy and joint military operations classes. Additionally, over the summer, he supported the change of command for the Naval War College president and worked with the Joint Land Air Sea Strategic Special Program. He is an active member of Ocean Point Church and actively volunteered in the community. The Naval War College will be presenting him a Weems and Plath compass kindly gifted by the Naval War College Foundation. for the College of Naval Command and Staff. The honor graduate for the November 2023 graduating class is Major Seth Reed, United States Army. Would you please come up to the stage? Major Reed was the activities and athletics representative for his joint maritime operations seminar and the class leader and government shutdown contingency plan representative for his leadership in the professional of arms seminar. <laughs> During the summer, he participated in a leadership development program with Colonel retired Joe McGraw. Additionally, Major Reed put his leadership skills to the test by coaching youth soccer and little league baseball. Finally, Major Reed actively volunteered in his community. The Naval War College will be presenting him a Weems and Plath compass, kindly gifted by the Naval War College Foundation. We will now give our honor graduates a few moments to address their fellow graduates and classmates. Well, th thank you so much. Uh, this is such an honor. Um, a former Assistant Secretary of the Navy and the 32nd President of the United States, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, said, there were three critical elements to public speaking. Be sincere, be brief, and be seated. I plan on doing that. Uh, so here goes. Over the last year, we've had, uh, we've been fortunate to attend the Naval War College and immerse ourselves in the study of war, the statesmanship connected to war, and most importantly, the prevention of war. Thanks to the President and Provost for Admiral Garvin and Dr. Mariano, 
who tirelessly worked to maintain the prestige and relevant academic rigor of the Naval War College. Thanks to the Naval War College Foundation for the support they give to this esteemed institution to ensure it can continue to develop the military and civilian leaders of the future, to meet the challenges of the strategic environment, preserve our natural security, and navigate the challenges of war and the prevention of war. To the exemplary faculty and staff, the deans and the directors, the PhDs, active and retired military, academics, and practitioners. You have not only facilitated an exceptional learning environment, but you have nurtured deep reflection on leadership, focused, uh, forced us to think critically about the formation of grand strategy and foreign policy, ponder the delicate intricacies of international relations, fully embrace the sanctity and primacy of the objective in military operations, and challenged our assumptions in a world of ongoing great power competition. It has been a true honor and a privilege to think hard and to learn from each of you. Thank you. We're also <laughs> incredibly grateful. <laughs> that was my Klaus Witzia moment. <laughs> We're also incredibly grateful to our families and our friends, those who support us in every step of our careers and without which our accomplishments would be meaningless. I know I speak for all the graduates today. Thank you to all our family and our friends for your undying support. Personally, I have the love of my life, my wife Ash, who has selflessly supported me going on 23 years now. Six deployments, two command tours, and now a master's degree. And my amazing 13-year-old daughter, Piper, who sets the example of getting good grades. Thank you, I love you both. Graduates, my fellow brothers and sisters in arms, I wish you and your families all the best in the future. This experience of learning alongside you, and notably from you, is one I will cherish the rest of my life. Congratulations, and may you see only the fairest winds and following seas. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Sherman. I now present to you Major Reed. I want to first address Commander Hammond for the assumption I spent weeks on this. I found out yesterday after dinner, so I ask for both grace and mercy as I deliver these comments <laughs> uh, <laughs> to you all. So I'd like to say good afternoon to the official party, uh, to the distinguished guests with us, the graduates, and of course our family and friends. I'll be honest, this moment is quite surreal for me uh, as a former Army football player who lost every game he played against Navy. Uh, this is genuinely the nicest thing the Navy has ever done for me, and I am, I am genuinely appreciative of it. Thank you. That was for Navy winning, right? Okay. Um, I want to start by thanking the staff and faculty of the Naval War College. The benefit that results from their diversity of perspectives, experience, and knowledge is thoroughly enhanced by their dedication to the collective goal of making us better each and every day. The amazing experience offered here at the Naval War College is a result of their hard work and effort, and we want to ensure they know it does not go unnoticed or underappreciated. There was never a moment I did not feel fully supported here at the Naval War College, and I'm sure that's a sentiment shared by all the graduates today. Next, I'd like to thank our family and friends for the support, encouragement, and space to complete the many requirements commensurate with a rigorous academic program. That includes our military spouses, who continued to serve as the backbone of our families, even in an academic environment. Whether it was entertaining the kids during 24-hour paper writing marathons or encouraging us to read before enjoying the incredible distractions Newport has to offer, it was all effort that allowed us to be here today, so thank you. I added this next part to thank my children mostly as an apology because mine are disappointed that they're here today and not in school. <laughs> Turns out I can't compete with art class and, and that's okay. But in all seriousness, our children, who are mostly along for the ride, deserve an enormous amount of credit for their patience, courage, and understanding. Immersing themselves into a community only to be uprooted and forced to do it all over again a year later is no small feat and certainly worthy of our recognition. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, I want to thank my classmates for their willingness to share their perspectives, respectfully challenge other perspectives, and for buying into this opportunity to make not only themselves, but all of us better. This is my second Department of the Navy professional military education experience. 
My first was in Quantico at the Marine Corps Expeditionary Warfare School. And I'll pause so all my Marine friends can appreciate what I just did there. <laughs> each of these experiences reinforced my belief that the trust and confidence we build in each other and the relationships we forge in these opportunities serve as the foundation of our military strength. Over the course of this year, I've been amazed by the talent, competence, and dedication displayed by all of my classmates, whether from the DOD, military, civilian, interagency, and of course the incredible international students we get to interact with on a daily basis. So I will leave the Naval War College clear-eyed and fully aware that we stand to inherit some extreme challenges in the complex and uncertain environment we're returning to. However, I take with me unwavering trust and confidence in our ability to meet these challenges together and succeed when we do. The future will undoubtedly depend on our ability to work together in a capacity that far exceeds the basic requirements of our joint doctrine. So I want to thank you again to all of you who dedicated time inside and outside the classroom to ensuring we were able to excel in the face of our future adversity. So then I wanted to bring it back down and end with a cliche graduation facts about numbers of pages read and written in this total, in total this year. But as I started to do it, it was both anxiety inducing and ultimately didn't seem worth the effort. So instead, I will once again thank the Naval War College from the bottom of my heart and all the attendees for allowing me to provide remarks today. And I will demonstrate the full extent of my joint force maturity that I gained this year and not leave you with a go army as I want to, but rather extend wishes for fair winds and following seas and wish the sincerest good luck to all of you. Thank you. A Master of Arts degree in National Security and Strategic Studies, or Defense and Strategic Studies, as appropriate, will now be conferred to the graduates. Will the graduates please rise and remain in place? Dr. Mariano, please approach the podium. Provost, sir, I have the honor to, to present the November graduates of the U.S. Naval War College candidates for the Master of Arts in National Security and Strategic Studies, or Defense and Strategic Studies. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. By the power vested in me by the Secretary of the Navy, the New England Commission of Higher Education, and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, I confer upon you all appropriate degrees and diplomas. Please join me in saluting with a grand round of applause the November 2023 United States Naval War College graduates. Thank you, Provost. Graduates, please be seated. Beyond the requirements for graduation, Certain individuals have distinguished themselves through academic excellence. For those in the top 5%, they are receiving a diploma with highest distinction. Those in the next 15% will receive a diploma with distinction. Graduates will now receive their diplomas. Graduates, please proceed to the stage as your name is read. Guests are welcome to come forward to take pictures. Please try to hold your applause until all the names have been read. Dr. Mariano, Professor Hammond, and Dr. Schultz, please rise. Presenting the graduating members of the College of Naval Warfare, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey W. Arlequeue, U.S. Army National Guard. Commander Craig H. Connor, U.S. Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Brenton D. Grenewald, U.S. Army National Guard. Commander Paul W. Nickel, U.S. Navy. <laughs> Lt. 
Commander Paul S. Rogers, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Captain Jason J. Sherman, U.S. Navy, with highest distinction. <laughs> now presenting the graduating members of the College of Naval Command and Staff. Lieutenant Commander Eric A. Bowen, U.S. Navy. Major Jonathan R. Craig, U.S. Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Drew W. Denno, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Jonathan T. DeMarco, United States Navy, with highest distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Jason M. Ely, United States Navy. Commander Frederick K. Espy, U.S. Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Michael M. Faulkner, U.S. Navy. Commander Eric D. Gardner, U.S. Navy, with distinction. Major Michael W. Hannon, U.S. Army. Lieutenant Commander Jason L. Herrera, U.S. Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Linda P. Irwin, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Monique K. Jefferson, U.S. Navy. <laughs> Major Andrew J. Kang, U.S. Army. With distinction. Lieutenant Commander Matthew J. Larson, United States Navy, with distinction. Major Antoinette A. Linarelli, U.S. Army. Major Matthew J. Linarelli, U.S. Army, with distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Michael R. McDevitt, U.S. Navy.
Lieutenant Commander Thomas O. Menorick, United States Navy, with distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Dane R. Muchler, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Jason S. Nowak, U.S. Navy. Major Ryan R. Pfeiffer, U.S. Army National Guard. Lieutenant Commander Jessica L. Fenning, U.S. Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Brian A. Pickler, U.S. Navy. Major Seth. E. Reed, U.S. Army, with highest distinction. <laughs> Lieutenant Cody M. Roberts, U.S. Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Richard Rodriguez, Jr., U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Trevor G. Schaff, U.S. Navy. <laughs> Commander Zachary J. Sipes, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander David H. Sturgis, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Brandon L. Tomlin, U.S. Navy. Lieutenant Commander Theodore C. Wheeler, U.S. Navy. Please join us in a tremendous round of applause for our graduates, honorees, and their families. Dr. Mariano will now issue the charge to the graduates. Provost. Thank you, Dan. Well, on behalf of Rear Admiral Pete Garvin, the president of the U.S. Naval War College, welcome. A special welcome to our CNO fellows, Admiral Barrera and Admiral Sanas. Thank you very much. To all our guests here online, as well as uh, I believe we have General uh, Chevalier and Driscoll with us today. Welcome, uh, generals. And to the deans and department chairs and our service advisors and faculty and especially the staff here at the college, thank you. You have set a high bar and equipped these graduates to be tomorrow's leaders. Today you see the fruits of your labor as these graduates proceed to their follow-on assignments as peace and security professionals across the globe. Thank you. And to Commander Hammond, congratulations for being selected by the students to speak at their graduation. And thanks for your remarks today and all you do for them and for the college every day. And I want to point out MU2 uh, Moyer, who sang the national anthem. You might have seen him on Monday Night Football uh, singing the national anthem um, this week. Congratulations, MU2 Moyer. <laughs> 
And uh, to our colleagues at the Naval War College Foundation, represented today by uh, Chief Executive Officer uh, Mr. George Lang and the Foundation staff, and the community-minded Foundation members, thank you for all you do and for your generosity. Your gifts have provided a margin of excellence here at the college and enriched our programs uh, across the board. Uh, to our dedicated military families and loved ones, your support and endurance enable these warfighters to protect and serve our great nation. I hope this year in Newport provided new opportunities for you and your families. Thank you. And for those who supported the student from afar, that are online perhaps, we know that separation added to your stressors and that you missed those personal touches that only come with face-to-face -face interaction. Thank you for all your supporting uh, service for supporting your service members through their studies and everything you do for this great nation. And finally, to the class of 20, fall class of 2023, congratulations. You are now graduates of the U.S. Naval War College, a place of original research on all questions relating to war and statesmanship connected with war or the prevention of war, as first described by our founder, Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce. For the last year, you have all been working on your quotients. You might recall that we talked about your quotients, moving beyond your intelligence quotient or your IQ, uh, increasing your knowledge in other areas, your naval quotient, your strategy quotient, your operational planning quotient, your leadership quotient, and even your emotional quotient. Alongside this new knowledge, you've been provided a new set of tools that should help you to anticipate, prepare, and possibly even shape the future. If you apply what you've learned, you can simultaneously create a decisive warfighting advantage for the United States and strengthen bonds with our maritime partners and allies. President Biden stated in the national security strategy that close collaboration with allies and partners is foundational for U.S. national security interests and for our collective ability to address the challenges that China and Russia present while responsibly managing an array of other threats. Accordingly, our service chiefs have committed to working together to, quote, build and lead in advance a rules-based international system through shared commitments with our allies and partners. So building and sustaining coalitions has never been more important to protecting America as it is today. And now as graduates of our nation's preeminent sea power school, and hopefully with an increased naval quotient, you know that the United States is a maritime nation. Our security and prosperity depend on the seas, and our ability to maintain the freedom and navigation and commerce worldwide depends on our allies and partners. Please continue to expand your capabilities and capacities and relationships. Build a strong and worldwide network of maritime partnerships that are united in common purpose. You are graduating during a time of increasing and tense international competition at the tactical, operational, and strategic levels. This competition is for access to the sea, for terrain, for resources, for values, and for ideas. As we have all seen from recent events worldwide, the demand for your strategic and operational planning quotients might be needed sooner than anticipated. Although these strategic competitions with China and Russia, as well as the ongoing conflicts in the Middle East, might seem far away, they have directly impacted Naval War College community. So I ask you to remember and recognize the members of our community here at the Naval War College who have loved ones in peril. <clears throat> I know, for example, uh, Mr. George Lang, uh, his daughter, uh, Ensign Lang, is embarked on the USS Kearney. And you might have uh, heard that they uh, shot down several missiles and drones launched out of Yemen a few weeks ago, heading north into unspecified targets. All I can say is, go Navy. Our most crucial warfighting assets are our uh, soldiers, uh, our sailors, uh, soldiers, airmen, marines, guardians, and coast guardsmen. Every one of our service members brings different and extraordinary contributions to our team. And what an honor you will have, graduates, at leading them and working on your leadership quotient. Whether a small team or a large crew, you'll have a chance to build a high-performing and innovative workforce that builds a foundation not only of honor courage and commitment, but also of competence, diversity, and inclusion. As you assume new duties, please tap into the energy and capabilities of all your warfighters, valuing and integrating their ideas and contributions, exhibiting a little EQ along the way, and including diverse uh, perspectives on vexing challenges will go a long way in improving our ability to fight and win. Your careers as service members have been filled with unpredictability and momentous change and more is yet to come. 
This dynamism can be leveraged for the good. Continuous learning is a critical strategic enabler to the success of our fighting forces, our interagency and international partners. This last year of education was a direct investment into American and allied warfighting advantage, not only at sea, but also on the land, in the air, in space, and in cyberspace. As you move on to your next assignment, carry your education, experiences, and relationships forward with you into your new environment. Use your increased quotients and the new tools to better frame problems, critically analyze how we fight, develop creative solutions to wicked problems, and build winning teams. Your year here is only a thin slice of the learning that will take place throughout your career. Please continue investing in your personal and professional development for yourself and for those you will lead. Do not be content to sit comfortably in your area of expertise. Push yourself out to the edges and seek opportunities to interact with others, especially those with different viewpoints from yours. Don't rest on your laurels and return to old habits. Instead, take the knowledge and experience you gained here to see the challenges through a new lens. Indeed, put on new glasses, not rose-colored glasses, but your Naval War College glasses. So the charge thus far has included exhortations to use what you have learned to lead well, expand both your capabilities and capacities, and be ready. But your Naval War College experience is not yet complete, so I have three final charges. First, you're now Naval War College graduates, and so I charge you to represent this institution at a super high, super professional level when you get back out to the fleet and force. Go out and make it mean something, something more than just a piece of paper that goes on your wall. Second, I charge you to stay connected to your naval, joint, interagency, and international classmates. You never know when they or their nation will need you, or when you or the United States will need them. And third, I charge you to stay engaged with the Naval War College and the Alumni Association. You're entering into a prestigious community, 130 years of world event changing history. With your feedback, we will continue to push the bar higher here at the Naval War College to deliver excellence in education, research, and outreach. To all the families and friends here today, thank you once again for being a pillar for your graduate strength and for taking the time to share this momentum occasion with us here in Spruance Auditorium or online. Graduates, bravo Zulu. Congratulations on a, well, a job well done. Go Navy. Thank you, Provost. Will everyone please rise and remain standing for the benediction and the departure of the official party. Let us pray. Eternal Father, strong to save, we thank you for each person here who represents a far larger community. This group's global impact will bring peace to worn torn lands. May their networks and friendships continue to flourish. Lord, your arm hath bound that restless wave, so bring resolutions to places of conflict. Bring the warfighter home to their loved ones. Protect those who are training and deploying. Give wisdom to the political leaders and discernment to their advisors. You bid the mighty oceans deep and you have called us out upon those waves. May those ways be avenues of fair trade, fair wind, and following seas. As we leave here, may your word be a lamp to our feet and your presence ever before our eyes. O oh, hear us as we cry to thee, these warriors out upon your land, air, and seas. In all your holy names we pray, amen.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our graduation ceremony. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Congratulations.